Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Greetings and welcome to our worship opportunity today. It's wonderful to have all of you joining us. Today is the uh, sixth Sunday of Easter, and we are nearly finished with the Easter season this year. And this next week is our last week in Easter, and then we go into the season of Pentecost. Uh, my name is Gary Stevenson. May I'm Gary Stevenson. I am the lead pastor at uh, Hope Lutheran Church. And again, welcome. It's a pleasure to have each and every one of you with us today. Hello, good morning, buenos dias, welcome, bienvenidos. Happy to be able to gather with you online, virtually, for this time of worship. My heart hurts that you all can't be here in the sanctuary at the church, physically present, worshiping together, but we know that God is working through hearts and lives across distance and technology. And so we trust that what God's Holy Spirit is doing inside of each of us will be something that we'll carry forward into the future together. I'd like to offer a Spanish language greeting as well. Bienvenidos a todos ustedes que están aquí con nosotros. Esperamos que algún día ustedes puedan estar aquí en el mismo lugar junto con nosotros para celebrar y adorar a nuestro Señor Jesucristo. Estamos muy agradecidos que ustedes puedan acompañarnos en este culto de alabanza. Estamos agradecidos que ustedes puedan uh, estar con nosotros. Estamos todos un cuerpo en Dios. Estamos todos la iglesia de nuestro Salvador. Vamos adentro. Let's go in and worship God together. It's my pleasure this morning to give you just a little bit of an update about things here at Hope Lutheran. Uh, one of the things that I appreciate is that our giving to this point has remained very strong. You have continued to support the congregation, and while our um, usage from outside groups is, is obviously down, and our, some of our expenses are down as well, the giving has continued to be strong, and I want to thank you and commend you for that. And I know that there are people that have tuned in with our uh, recorded worship that have also been generous in your gifts. And thank you for those as well. We were fortunate enough to get uh, the loan through the payroll protection plan. We'll be using that over the next few weeks. And uh, another one of our ministries here at Hope that's very important is the Learning Tree, our preschool. Uh, our preschool has remained open during this in, entire pandemic, and during that time, we have been able to care for a number of children whose parents are first responders. They're the ones that are on the front line of all of this. And so I want to in introduce our director, or excuse me, not our director, but our board chair for the Learning Tree, uh, Jackie Har, who has a few words about just how things are, the state of the, uh, the school. Thank you. 45 years ago, Pastor Tom Natterstead, along with a committee of which I was a part of, presented to the church an opportunity and a vision to open a Christian child care center here on the campus. The congregation agreed to that, and 45 years ago, we were able to open the doors to the learning tree. We have continued to provide a safe and nurturing environment where our children come 
where they can grow and develop not only physically but spiritually. We have continued to have parents who came here as students return with their children, and we are very grateful for that. Today, obviously, we've had some major changes at the Learning Tree. COVID-19 forced the Learning Tree into a very difficult financial position. Our child enrollment went from 90 to 26. Most days we have about 22 that attend. And as Pastor said, these are for essential workers, and we are so grateful that we're able to serve them. Our thing that we need to remember is that we are one ministry here at Hope. We're connected, and that is most important. So how financially this impacts the learning tree will also impact the church. I passionately, I can't tell you how passionate I am about the need for this ministry to continue where we can continue to serve children in a safe and nurturing environment. I do invite you to continue to give your gifts to the church, and as you are able to uh, give a gift to the Learning Tree, I invite you now to watch a video, and I thank you, and God bless. So 45 years ago, I had the privilege of serving on that task force. We were able to open the learning tree. We felt there was a great need for a place where children could come to a safe and nurturing environment where they could grow and develop and continue to thrive. As quick as education is moving, um, the family bond that children get here is so important. Um, their exposure to faith, um, knowing that there is a bigger thing that is there to support them in their life is so important right now. It's really amazing to see kids who need some support, who need a stable environment, and who need more than what they can get from home, um, actually get it. Being able to present uh, the gospel to our children and to our staff is a very important part of my life, and I very much enjoy being able to share with my families and my staff and the children to be able to pray with them um, to help them during their time of need. My three-year-old and my five-year-old, they come home, they say their prayers even at snack time, dinner time, breakfast time, you name it, they say their prayers at night and I'm just like, wow, what a daycare. Uh, so about six months old, she undergone brain surgery for epilepsy, and then again, slightly older than one year old. And during those times, we would keep her home as we were trying to figure out what life would be with everything. And the learning tree was, you guys do what you need to do, and we're right here for you, praying for you. She's been able to grow so much. She does some things with them that she won't even do with us, like how she's starting to finally walk by holding hands. Don't do that with us at home, but we we've seen amazing things happen here. As a teacher, one of my favorite memories is having the kids come back, like after they've been gone for years, because I've been here so long. That they'll be like in high school or something, and they'll come back and say hi or just give me hugs. I remember like being in my class, so that's really neat. There's a lot of youth out there who are lost. 
don't know where they're going, who don't know what they want to do, and if they don't get the enrichment, they can turn to a life that's not appropriate. I see enrichment here. I see reasons to be here, and the kids, I think, will feel like they've been enriched. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. At this point in our worship, I invite our children to come forward that we might have a few moments together. This is always a, one of the fun times in the service for me, and uh, I look forward to, to having a chance to share. In fact, I, I brought something this morning, and I, I thought I could put it in my bag, but my bag isn't quite this large. So, um, now If you see this, you might think that... Uh, it looks a little different, and, and yeah, we don't see a lot of these around anymore. These aren't used as much today as they were, say, about the time of Jesus. This is called a, a shepherd's crook, and it was, uh, we could also call it, I suppose, a, a shepherd's helper. This was one of the things that a shepherd would use when the shepherd was out in the fields with the sheep. Uh, in the old days, a shepherd would be with the sheep 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and so they would get to know each other and um, smell alike after a few days. Anyhow, so this was the, the shepherd's helper because a shepherd could do a lot of things with this. One of the, the jobs of the shepherd was to protect the sheep. And if you had a, a wild animal that was going to attack the sheep, you could use the, the one end of it to, to keep the wild animal away. That's why they were nice and long because uh, that's easily much longer than uh, an arm of a, or a leg of a, an animal would be. And if you were trying to keep your own sheep out of trouble and saw that they were getting away from you, you could use this end. You could reach out and, and grab the back end of the, the one sheep's leg and, and pull it back. Uh, that would help, especially if they, were, if they were running away and they were just a little bit out of reach. So these would come in very handy. It'd be nice to have some of these uh, if you were a shepherd. It's a lot different shepherding today, where in the United States, anyhow, you have a large field and, and the sheep are able to, uh, to stay within the, uh, the fenced area. But when you had an open area, these were, were very important and were used all the time by a shepherd. In our gospel reading this morning, we hear Jesus saying that he is going to send a helper to the disciples. He's not going to leave them alone. He's not going to abandon them or orphan them. He's going to send a, a helper. And the helper he names as the Holy Spirit. Jesus knows that the disciples have 
a lot going for them, but there will be times where they'll need just a little more. They'll need someone to help them. And the Holy Spirit is there to encourage them, to give them strength, to give them all the different kinds of things that they need to face all the, the obstacles that, that they, they will come across throughout their lives. And Jesus has promised also to send us the Holy Spirit as well. The Holy Spirit makes all of us that are in the church brothers and sisters, and it gives us the encouragement, the strength that we need that we can reach out and help other people too. Well, it, it's not necessarily going to look like this, but God encourages us, and God strengthens us, and God sends us out to help one another. So will you pray with me? Thank you, God, for the gift of your Holy Spirit, which is with us all the time, to encourage us, to help us, to know that you are with us, and to know your love. Thank you for this very special gift. Amen. And thank you for our time together. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in the, my Father and you in me and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you all from the God who was and is and is still yet to come. Amen. Here we are. In the middle of the Easter season, here we are in the middle of a global health pandemic. But in the Easter season, we're celebrating the good news of our faith, the truth that Christ did not stay dead in the tomb, but that Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. This season in the church year between Easter and Pentecost, the theme of the season is resurrection, new life. Unfortunately, Resurrection has a nasty prerequisite, namely death. It's difficult to experience new life without some type of loss. Coincidentally, this is a theme that is all too familiar to us these days. Death. Literally, figuratively, symbolically, death of plans, of hopes and dreams, of loved ones, of civility, the death of civil discourse, certain expectations of humanity. We are familiar with loss, grief, cancellations, and disappointment. Our scripture passage for this message comes from the portion of John's Gospel known by scholars as Jesus' farewell discourse. Jesus is saying goodbye. The disciples just days before had participated in the festivities surrounding Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. They had just observed the Passover with Jesus. The Last Supper has just ended and Jesus is looking ahead toward his impending crucifixion. Jesus lets his friends, the disciples, know that life is going to change. And the disciples, being the good Lutherans that they were, were not impressed. The disciples understandably did not want things to change. But resurrection requires death. And if nothing changes, nothing changes. 
Do we really want to go back to normal? Or do we have faith to hope that God is doing something new? I will ask the Father and He will give you another Advocate to be with you forever. I'm not going to be sticking around here, but somebody else will take my place. No, Jesus, we're comfortable. Comfortable with the, thing, the way that things are. The way that things were. Don't change anything. I didn't like the color of the carpet in the sanctuary at first, but I've gotten used to it. It doesn't need to be replaced. Come to think of it, I can't quite remember what the color of the carpet in the sanctuary is anyway. It's been so long since we got to worship in there. I know that I complained about wearing a mask at first, but if that's what it takes for us to be able to be open, to open up stores, let's do it. I shouldn't have to set aside my own personal liberties and freedoms because those people are in a vulnerable group, should I? Come on. Am I my brother's keeper? That's in the Bible, right? The disciples understandably did not want things to change. But resurrection requires death, and if nothing changes, nothing changes. Do we really want to go back to normal, or do we have faith to hope that God is doing something new? Jesus' time on earth was limited, but this advocate will be here forever. Forever is good. Forever doesn't usually change too much. Forever definitely sounds like an upgrade. This is the spirit of truth. Uh Uh-oh. We're talking about the Holy Spirit already? It's not even Pentecost yet. I hope things don't get too weird. Spirit? Like, Like a ghost? Like Casper, the friendly ghost? Maybe like the ghost that visited Scrooge in Dickens' Christmas Carol? Those ghosts weren't too bad. They helped him turn his life around. Spirit of truth? Hmm. I'm not sure if I'm ready for the truth. Are you ready for the truth? You can't handle the truth. I can handle the truth. At least, my truth. Well, truth. That's an interesting topic these days, isn't it? Wouldn't it have been more appropriate if Jesus sent the spirit of compelling opinion or Facebook science? Yeah, because there are some parts of my life that I'm not really interested in just putting it out there for everyone to see. The truth, that's a little much, don't you think? I'm more comfortable with doing things my way. I don't even like people seeing my messy house when when I'm in a Zoom meeting. That's what all of those virtual backgrounds are for, isn't it? I'm more comfortable with being in control. I'm more comfortable with, well, being comfortable. A spirit of truth? Honestly, that sounds a bit obnoxious, if I'm being truthful. The disciples understandably did not want things to change. But resurrection requires death. And if nothing changes, nothing changes. Do we really want life to go back to normal? Or do we have faith? to hope that God is doing something new. You know Him, Jesus said, because He abides with you and He will be in you. Abides with me? Like He won't leave me alone? Like when my in-laws came and stayed a little bit too long? Always there? Always watching? That definitely sounds a bit invasive. That's even worse than the folks who sat in my favorite pew. The Spirit of Truth? will be with me? So then, what about my dark secret? My bad habit? God will know that also? Even the thoughts that I allow myself to think but I try not to act on too much, usually, this nosy spirit knows them as well. Jesus, having you in my life has been great. I've really appreciated the opportunity to learn from you, follow your examples, see how to treat people, listen to your teachings, but for the most part, I've been able to be in control of my own life. There was that one time when you sort of left us for dead out on the lake in the middle of the storm. That was a bit harsh, but we survived. I did what you asked, Jesus. I left my home, I left my family, I'm following you. 
I read my Bible most days. I give money to the church. I show up for Sunday morning worship nearly every week. And now, since I can do it in my pajamas at four in the afternoon, it's even more convenient. I'm a good disciple, Jesus. I'm a good person. Can't we just leave it at that? What's the need for the spirit of truth? Moving in. Abiding with me. Taking up residence. Right in the middle of my life. The disciples, understandably, did not want things to change. But resurrection requires death. And if nothing changes, nothing changes. Do we really want life to go back to normal? Or do we have faith to hope that God is doing something new? I will not leave you orphans. I am coming to you. I'm not sure what the need is for all of this coming and going, Jesus. If you would just stay things would be great. You can just be Jesus, teacher, miracle worker, friend of sinners, ruffler of the feathers of the religious elite, fisherman extraordinaire. All of these things have been great. Laying down your life, being the son of God, going away so that you can come back again. That all seems a bit unnecessary, don't you think? I know who you are, Jesus. You've taught me so much. You want me to meet your father. But he sounds a bit intense. Honestly, I'm already a little bit intimidated by you. Living a good life, being a good person, being kind to the people who are like me. Heck, I even volunteered to be a greeter two weeks in a row last year. Last year we gave money to the church on a regular basis, like not just when we felt like it, but regularly. Now, I know it wasn't 10%, but I'm sure it was more than most of these people give. After all, isn't it the thought that counts? Anyway, I think you could just stay, Jesus. Don't go anywhere. I have so much that I want to learn. The disciples, understandably, did not want things to change. But resurrection requires death. And if nothing changes, nothing changes. Do we really want life to go back to normal? Or do we have faith to hope that God is doing something new? They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Your commandments, Jesus, like not swimming right after dinner or keeping six feet of distance when we're praying for someone, or that whole thing about loving one another. I know that you want us to love one another. That's easy. We've all become like family. I love all of the guys. All the disciples, except, well, you mentioned that someone is going to betray you, someone is going to turn you in and initiate this whole process leading toward your death. I'm not sure if I could ever love someone who did that to you. I'm not sure if I could ever love someone who caused so much pain and disruption to my life. You asked us to love one another, but you showed some pretty extreme examples. It seems like you went out of your way to care for people caught in adultery, women who had been married a whole bunch of times, people on the margins of society. There were people that were pretty dirty and gross. There's a lot of people that you ate meals with that I wouldn't really want to invite into my home. Jesus, my neighbors across the street are Muslim, and I'm not exactly sure what that means, but I'm pretty sure it's different than Methodist. And then my neighbor's two houses down are Jehovah's Witnesses, and we tried to be nice to them, and we invited them to a birthday party, but they don't even celebrate that stuff. And I mean, that's just wrong. Who doesn't celebrate birthdays? Even my Aunt Mary celebrates birthdays, even though she lies about her age. You talked about us being loved by your father, and I think that that means everyone without exception. But some people are different. Their differences make me uncomfortable, and I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do about that. All this talk about sexuality and gender identity, is it really important for everyone to be welcome? What about everything that's happening regarding race? I mean, I don't think I'm a racist. I don't want to be a racist, but I'm guessing I probably am racist since the problem feels like it's 
out there. Because I can get to know people, but I know some of my friends aren't so sure. This is our church. We've been here for a lot of years. Well, I mean, I know it's your church too, Jesus, but you know what I mean. You will love them and reveal yourself to them too. Will you reveal yourself to me? In your death, Jesus, everything changes. My understanding of God changes when you let yourself go. New life, certainly a breath of fresh air. It's like walking outside after too many days of quarantine. I want to let go of what I was clinging on to, my bitterness, my resentment, all of it. I want to let go so that I can experience all that you have for me, all that you have for us. Your kingdom come, your will be done. I want to grow, Jesus. I don't want for things just to stay the same. Help me. Lord, have mercy. Amen.
As we have heard the promises of God through the gospel and through our message this morning, let us together join in confessing our faith as we speak the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we welcome our God into the sanctuaries of our homes, let us pray for all the needs of the world, responding to each petition with words that echo today's psalm, O God, hear us. Abide in God, come into all the homes around the globe from which your people offer their prayers. Bless Christian leaders as they guide the church through this pandemic. Show our pastors and our church councils the way forward. Grant your grace also to the devout in other religions of the world and show your kindness to all who search for you, whether within or outside the church. For this we pray, O oh God, God, hear us. us. Creating God, revitalize the health of oceans, rivers, lakes, springs, glaciers, and other bodies of water that give life to your creatures. Especially we pray for our local bodies of water, Shaver Lake, Huntington Lake, Pine Flat Reservoir, Millerton Lake, the Kings River, and others. Form us into a baptized body that protect the waters on which we rely. For this we pray. O oh God, God, hear us. Righteous God, instill in all the leaders of nations a desire for justice and the will to serve the oppressed. We pray especially for those nations in which dictatorship threatens the population. Guide our nation's governors in their difficult pathway between the threat of disease and the dangers of scarcity and isolation. Bring our legislators into agreement about how to assist those in need. Give us patience in facing our current predicament. For this we pray. O oh God, God, hear us. Compassionate God, visit all who are in great need, those who suffer from the cor coronavirus, those living in loneliness and fear, those without jobs, and those who mourn their dead. Uphold those whose futures have been taken away from them. We pray for health care workers and for the residents in care homes, prisons, and refugee camps. For the countless persons who carry heavy burdens on their back, we pray and we lift up those who we name now either silently or aloud. For this we pray. Oh, oh God, God, hear us. Benevolent God, give the world a vaccine. For this we pray. O oh oh God, God, hear yes. us. Fatherly and motherly God, embrace all orphans. Support the agencies that attend to the world's orphans. Shield orphan children from traffickers. Give to all nations wisdom concerning the refugees who are children. Watch over all children whose usual caregivers are absent. Form us into your children who love all whom you have made. For this we pray. Oh, oh God, God, hear us. Yes. Loving God, once again, 
each of us offers our personal praises and petitions. For this we pray. O oh God, God, hear, hear us. us. Eternal God, your kingdom is here now, and it has no end. We remember the saints who have gone before us, and those we hold dearly in our hearts. Unite us forever in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. For this we pray. O oh God, God, hear us. us. With bold confidence in your love, merciful God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. This is the time in our worship where we would normally uh, take a moment and share God's peace with those that are sitting near us, across the aisles, or wherever. We might even walk across the sanctuary to, to greet one another. In this day and age, we're not able to do that, and we do pray and continue to pray for the day to come when we will be able to gather together and share the peace that way. In the meantime, there are still ways that we can share God's peace, a, a peace that the world so desperately needs. We can not only pray for our brothers and sisters around the world, those that are near us, those that are, are far away. We can also, we have our, our phones that we can call folks, we can text, we can go on computers, send emails. But think about those in your life who need the peace of God at this time, and I invite you to share that peace with them in any way that you can. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you give us the joy of celebrating our Lord's resurrection. Give us also the joys of life in your service, and bring us at last to the full joy of life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And receive with believing hearts the benediction. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. And Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Bless you now and forever. Amen.
Let your glory fall as you respond to us. Spirit rain, flood into our thirsty hearts again. You come, you come. Let your glory fall. is risen, just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. <laughs>